I swear it was just like yesterday. Crazy how it flies a couple months to just the other day. Was kids like Cuddy, out the slump like Muddy. I got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three like I'm buddy. So, brother, you better heal. I got faith like a shield. Devil, too short, too God, like the last name was Bill. Or short, too God, who call like watching CP on MB. It's tempting to talk, but with God, it's my prop. I really never stood a chance without the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus been the reason for every single season. Though I've been down and out, but with the touch of his garment, all of the weapons before me, for me, and never again. Oh, Lord, I'm blessed. Thank you, Lord, for giving me your mercies that be running up and never running out from my enemies. Yeah, I got a lot of enemies. Got to level me like Uber East of the house. Never call a nicer for me, boy. I play for the Spurs. I be dishing him the rock because he rose on the third. Holy Spirit blocking everything like my name is Serge. And we be jumping out the gym and jumping straight to the church. I don't make the call. I don't fight it all. Gave it all to God. Jesus paid it all. Even when I fall, I don't trip at all. Cut it like a saw. Pulling out my sword and like a liar. Rock. For the upper team by Christ. Huh? See, I'm in, in the image of the one I keep it classic. Pass around his grace and wear like Johnson, no magic. Conquering the grave like Amazon, you know he packed it. Father, Son, and Spirit, me, that's four like fantastic. Balling like I'm pipping, moving like a piss and stop. Uh, yes, I am a mission. Yes, I am a Christian drop. Uh, all you better listen, shining like a glisten cop. Raise him higher than Christ did that night, cause you know he did it. Hey, what's up, New Hope Las Vegas? My name is Thomas. I serve here on the announcements team. And I just want to give a short welcome to those of you who are in person and for those of you who are online as well. Just leave a like, a comment, and just let me know where you're from. We do have a lot of announcements today, so let's dig in. How's it going New Hope? This is Justin. I have the opportunity to fill in on keys for the last two weeks and I want to invite you to a Christ Fire concert here at the church on August 4th, Thursday night at 7 p.m. I want to encourage you to invite your family, your friends, and even your co-workers because Christ Fire is a full-time missionary band and ministry that travels throughout the world reaching the lost at any cost.
that looks like all the announcements we have for you today. If you happen to miss anything, you can go to our connections counter. We have our web apps and our social media platforms as well. And it's time to worship, guys. So let's rise up to our feet and praise our Lord. In three, two, one. Hallelujah. Good evening, New Hope, Las Vegas. Somebody make a joyful noise for the Lord today. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We declare that your goodness and your mercy follow me all the days of our lives. So, Lord, let your goodness fill this place. Let your mercy fill this place. For we are here to declare and sing about your goodness. Fall afresh on your people. We love you, Lord. We give you the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, we all say, amen and amen. Come on, we're going to praise him today. Hey, hallelujah, Lord. Woo, let's go. If you know that he is good, lift your voice and shout. Sing.
God 
Somebody, come on, somebody, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. There is nothing better than our God. There is nothing better. There is no better place to be. So, there is no better place to be than in the house of God. Somebody lift up and shout a praise. Yes, Father, yes, Father. We're going to continue to worship tonight. So wherever you are, can you just praise the Father right now in your own tongue, in your own way. Don't worry about anybody else who came in. You just worship the Father right now. So I'm going to give you a couple seconds to lift up your voice to your papa today. Come on, somebody. How many of us know that he makes a way for us? How many of us know that we serve the way maker? How many of us know that the way has already been made? You're worthy, Father. You're worthy, 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 worthy. you 
Lord, you move mountains. You cause walls to fall. I don't know about you, but the spirit is moving in this place. I don't know about you, but if you don't feel it, you better do something. The spirit is moving in this place right now. The spirit is moving in this place right now. We're not going to rush this time. You said the spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us, yeah. come rest on us. Can we say that? Say the spirit was moving over the water. Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come on. Come rest on us, yeah. come rest on us. Say the spirit was moving. The spirit was moving over the water. Spirit come move over us. your presence Holy Spirit so all we can do is just humbly bow before the throne we humbly bow before the throne giving you control of the atmosphere we're letting go of it we're letting go of it Lord we're getting we're letting go of our striving we're letting go of our trying and we're just gonna give it to you tonight father so Lord Father we ask that you continue to fill this place right now. May you have been pleased. May you have been pleased with our worship to you. Now, Father, we need the word from you. So, Father, anoint the speaker so that he can deliver and take all flesh away so that you can step in and so you can speak to your people. You can, not him. You speak, not him. Your word, not his. Your will, not his. May you speak tonight, Father, so that we can receive. So that we can receive your guidance, your love, your mercy, your grace, your movement. So thank you, Lord Father God. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for this time of worship that we got to come here and, and lift up our voices to you. We praise you. We honor you. We love you, oh exalted God. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, we all say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Man, wasn't that a worship? Right? Come on now. Congregation, you may be seated as the ushers come and collect our tithes and offerings. For those of you online, thank you for tuning in. There will be a link in the comments. If you are a online giver, there is a QR code in front of you or behind me or on the or back of the bulletin. That being said, I do have some announcements. First, water baptism. Water baptism will be happening um, on what is this? August 21st at 9:45 a.m. If you're ready to take that next step in your walk, you can register online on our website or on our app. There's even a table out in the foyer. If you have any questions or concerns, go visit that table, and we'll be glad to help you out. Next, child dedication. So your children is a gift from God. Amen. Okay, so now we have to dedicate our kids back to the Lord, right? That's happening on August 28th. You can actually register online, our website, or on our app. If you have any questions about that, you can see the children's director, Liz, over on the children's side. Uh, next, but not last, there's a lot going on, but this one we have the Remnant Young Adults holding a free, free concert.
concert of um, Christafari. If you don't know who they are, they're actually a reggae band, a Christian reggae band. It's being held on August 4th at 7 p.m. Don't forget, I said free. Um, all ages are welcome. Invite a family member, invite a friend. It'll be a great time worship, worshiping the Lord in a reggae way, all right? Well, that's all I have for the announcements. Um, if you go on our website or on the app, you can get connected or see what else is going on here at New Hope. Ushers, if you could please bring forth the tide so that we may pray over it. Congregation, if you could please bow your heads, stretch forth your hands, but most of all, stretch forth your hearts. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for being so faithful. Thank you for being the one and only who can satisfy every desire and every need. Lord, in your word, it says that we should honor you by giving you our first fruit, first fruit of our wealth. So we lift up these tithes and offerings to you, Lord. We ask that you multiply it for your kingdom, that your kingdom may effectively grow, Lord. I ask that uh, for those who are obedient, that you just um, bless them. I ask that those who gave freely with their hearts, you give them an extra blessing. And Lord, I ask that for those who are struggling, that you just touch their hearts and you open up their understanding to your word of being obedient on giving them, giving you their first fruits, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If everyone could please rise to their feet. And if you guys could please help me give a well, a welcome to our speaker tonight, LJ Lauti. good tonight. Y'all look good. Yes. <laughs> Y'all ready for a word? Amen. Um, so tonight should be a, it should be a lighthearted message. There shouldn't be any uh, anything uh, crazy happening. Shouldn't be. Right? Should be lighthearted. We should have fun tonight. But just in case, I'm going to show y'all the secret sauce. All right? I'm going to show y'all this right here. This is it. You know what this is right here? Tuck your toes, because just in case the Holy Spirit comes with big shoes tonight, if you don't want your toes stepped on, tuck your toes. Amen? Hallelujah. But you should be fine. It should be a lighthearted message. We should be, it should be all right. We should be in and out of here in about three hours. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Hallelujah. Join me as I pray in. Lord, Father God, that worship, that was for you, Lord. That was, that was our time to you. So now, Lord, Father God, we stand here um, with open palms ready to receive this part of the service, ready to receive your message. So, Father, speak to us. Holy Spirit, move me out of the way. Holy Spirit, move away my flesh. You come and plant the seeds in our hearts. As our, our palms are open, we're going to receive your word and your seeds and therefore apply it to our life. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, we all say amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right, story time, story time, story time, story time. I, um, I remember one day at work, I was walking to the front door of my office, and it just so happened that one of the ladies was getting there at the same time as me, right? Uh, and this lady, she was like, she's, she was a higher up, right? She was an authoritative figure. She was like, she's a big dog, one of the big dogs at the company, yeah. So uh, me, being a good Christian man, I um, opened the door for her, and I said, after you, ma'am, 
and I smiled politely, right? And uh, <laughs> so, the, so the lady, she walked in, and then halfway she turned around to me and she wagged her finger at me. Oh, uh, yeah. She started wagging, and then she said, if you call me ma'am one more time, I'm going to trip you. <laughs> yeah, she wanted to trip me because I called her ma'am. So I was flabbergasted, right? That's a word. You can look it up. I was flabbergasted, and I kind of felt bad. She seemed like she was a little irritated, a little offended, right, by me calling her ma'am. So uh, I said, oh, I'm, I apologize for the inconvenience, right, because she's the big dog. I had, to, I had to use big words. I apologize for the inconvenience. I am so sorry. My deepest condolences. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. God bless. God bless. Yes, Jesus loves you, right? But on the inside, I was like, Satan, you let go of that woman right now. In the name of Jesus. Get ye behind me, Satan. Yo, stumbling block, trip me up self. Mm-mm, I ain't having that today. Not today, right? She, I, it was just a kind gesture. In the Psalm 1 culture, I was always taught to respect elders, right? And I, I wanted to acknowledge her position in the company. So I called her ma'am out of respect, right? But for some reason, she didn't want to accept my blessing. It was a small gesture, but she didn't want to accept my chivalrous action towards her, right? I don't know why. And that kind of sets us up for what we're going to be talking about today. Today we're going to be talking about blessing from others. Is it up there? Yes. Blessings from others, right? See, God blesses us in many ways. And one way he does so is by sending others our way to bless us, right? And um, I'm going to break it down like this. So in the kingdom of God, humility is exalted. The spirit is attracted to a humble heart, right? So because I've been in this for a long time, uh, I not only love putting others before me, I not only love putting myself behind others and, and giving others the spotlight, making others look good, right? Not only do I do that, I love it. I love being humbled, right, in a humbled position where others can shine. But see, as I was preparing this message, I realized I was missing an important part to humility. I've been lacking it in, in my life. I've been missing the receiving part, right? See, I always see myself as Magic Johnson. Y'all know who Magic Johnson is? Magic Johnson, he's just tossing dimes, right? You get the spotlight. You get the, yeah, yeah, you look good. Yeah, I'm always, you know, no, I'll take the back seat. Yeah, yeah, you look good, right? But then I always have a hard time receiving blessings from others. See, especially in New Hope, we do a good job. We're such givers. I love the, the Ohana spirit is definitely here, right? And everybody gives and everybody, yeah, but we can't neglect that receiving part. We have to make sure we're receiving the blessings from others. It's not just about giving. It's about receiving, all right? So tonight we're going to talk about that. How to receive, why is it important to receive blessings from others, and what happens when we don't. Yeah, it gets a little deeper than we thought, all right? Amen? You guys ready? Okay, hallelujah. Okay, here we go. So uh, when others come to bless us, when God sends us people to bless us, uh, there's two main categories of blessings. Number one, the tangible blessings, right? The stuff that we can touch, right? Hey, brother, I don't know. God put it on my heart to bless you with this money. Hey, sister, I, I don't know. Uh, God put it on my heart to, uh, to help you move this Saturday or something like that. Some, it's tangible, right? Or something random like, oh, your husband needs a golf club, so somebody gives you a golf club to give you your husband to, to golf at the golf club with his golf club. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's a bar right there. Right? It's something random, but it's just things that you can touch. Those are tangible blessings, right? But the second category is, is often overlooked as well. Um, it's intangible blessings, things that you can't necessarily touch. And what does those look like? Hey, sis, I don't know. God, put it on my heart to pray for you. Right? Prayer. That can be a blessing as well. Or, hey, hey, dude, I, I love how you smile every time you do greeting. That's awesome. It makes me feel welcomed into this church. God, God bless you. It's an encouragement. That's also a blessing. I remember the first time that I encountered Pastor Kent at this church, right, the big dog, the senior pastor, right? So in 2019, it was about, I was about eight months into this church. I was just a little peon back in, back, back in the day, back in the day. I was just a piano player, 
I, I, nobody knew who I was. I was the glory days, right? I was just, I was just anonymous to everybody, right? Just get in, serve, and get out, right? Um, but uh, I remember in 2019, Pastor Wayne Cordero held a, uh, a conference here, like a conference with New Hope College. And uh, I remember I was sitting all the way back there in the corner, like literally where the vertice is, like in the corner corner. And, and then Pastor Kent started making his way from the back here to go outside, and he had to make his way along the wall, right? And I'm starting to freak out, right? I'm, I'm like eight months into this church, and it's the big dog. It's the big dog coming at me. And on top of that, he got like three huge armor bearers. Right? So, yeah, not intimidating at all. Right? So, as he's making his way, I see him, like, catching eyes with me. So, I'm like, all right, here we go. I'm going through a checklist. Breath. <sighs> okay, cool. Smell good? All right, cool, cool. Uh, don't speak until spoken to. All right? All right, cool, cool, cool. All right. So, as he got closer, I tried to go out for a handshake, and then he came in for a hug. <laughs> Mind you, this is the first time I ever encountered Pastor Kent, the big dog, right? So, um, he came in for an embrace, so I, I, I hugged him, right? So I was like, hey, Pastor Ken, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pastor Ken, what's up, man? <laughs> PK's not here tonight, so I can joke, but if you're watching PK, I love you, man. I love you, right? But anyways, because <laughs> PK's super tall, right? So, okay, so, PK, so Pastor Ken came for a hug, and we, and we embraced, right? And then I remember that he just kind of stiffened up his arms and stepped back. And then he looked at me, and then he just grabbed my shoulders. Boom. Like, he grabbed my shoulders like that. And then he was like, I'm in the midst of a future minister. God told me that you are going to be a minister at this church. And he walked off. Crazy, right? That was an encouragement in 2019. But now I realize that it is a blessing here in 2022. Because I don't know if you see, four years later, I'm behind the pulpit, singing behind the microphone, ministering the word of God to others, right? That, that encouragement was a blessing to me. And obviously I received it because otherwise I'd be in Canada trying to still run away from him, but he wouldn't let me, right? So I received the blessing and it came to fruition. I was able to see the fruits of that encouragement, the fruits of that blessing right there, right? See, God places you on other people's hearts regardless of who you are, he's going to place you on other people's hearts. But we can't receive the blessing unless we are number one, unless we do this, number one right here. We can't receive unless we position yourself to receive. So in order to receive it, we got to make sure we are positioning ourselves to receive. We can't receive it unless we are are not properly positioned. If we aren't in the right place physically, if we aren't in the place where God is intending us to be, it's going to be hard for us to receive blessings from others. If our heart isn't in the right place, if there's walls around our heart from past relationships, past hurts, come on, somebody talk about it, it's going to be hard for you to receive blessings from others. We got to make sure we are properly positioned to receive. Amen? So in order to help us out, we're going to get into the the good old Bible, right? And we're going to go to the book of Ruth. Book of Ruth. The book of Ruth is going to help us understand uh, proper positioning physically and spiritually. We need to have both sides of the spectrum, all right? So let's talk about the the physical part, right? So I'm going to give you all a rundown of what's happening in Ruth. It starts off with uh, this lady named Naomi. And she has a, uh, a husband and two sons. And they're in uh, Israel, near the promised land, right? And then uh, the, the, the Bible says that there's famine in the land where they are, all right? So what do they do? They pick up their family, right? And they move all the way to Moab. And Moab is, uh, this, the only thing that's wrong with this is that, well, they don't worship God. This is this town that doesn't know God, right? So they move from God's promised land to a land that doesn't know God's promises. They compromise their communion with God for their comfort just because there's famine back there, right? But that's another, that's another, that's another sermon. I'm going to get off task, right? So as they're in Moab, right, the time they're away from God's promised land, there's three major things that happen. Number one, number one thing that happened was that the sons married Moabite women. 
women from Moab, right? And in those times, it was looked down upon for Israelites to uh, marry people from foreign lands, right? That's the starting beginnings of being unequally yoked, okay? The second big thing that happened was, well, after that happened, the men die in the family, right? It's sudden. It's super sudden. So the husband and the two sons are dead, and now all that's left is Naomi and the two daughters, right? So then it seems like there is a lot more is hap- a lot worse is happening here than in back in. It was just a famine. Now there's death and sin and all this stuff. So after all of this is happening, right, the third biggest thing is this. Naomi, the mother, now hears that God is doing something great back in Israel. She hears that back home that God is doing something amazing. So this is, this is what she does right here. So in your, in your notes, your first verse, this is what Naomi does. She hears God is doing something good. So she does this. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. She wasn't in the right place. She missed those blessings because she was back in Moab. So she understood that God was doing something great over there. She had to arise and reposition herself back to where he was blessing, back to where she was supposed to be, right? See, sometimes we may not be in the right place or with the wrong people. We can miss the blessings of God. We can miss blessings from others. How many of us tonight may be in the wrong place in our lives? How many of us may be with the wrong people, right? Can we talk about that a little bit? Show me who your friends are. I'll show you who you are. Who are you fellowshipping with? Who are you following on Instagram? Huh? Are you kiss, kiss, hug, hugging on that boyfriend or girlfriend when you? That might not be God's intended future husband or wife for you. That might be somebody else's future husband or wife. Are you in the right church? Is this your home church or has God assigned you somewhere else? Are you in the right job? Or are you in the wrong job where you know that this is not the job that God has assigned you to? You may be making dough right here, but God is is giving out bread back in Israel. You may be getting dough at this job, but he got full, full made fresh bread over there, Right? See, if we aren't in the right place, we can just outright miss the blessing from God, right? So we got to make sure that if we need to, we need to reposition ourselves to properly receive the blessings from others. Receive the blessing that God has for you. But not just physically, no. Also spiritually, our hearts have to be repositioned as well. We got to make sure that our hearts are in the right place, right? So going back to the story, Naomi was going to prepare to go back home to Israel. But she didn't want her daughters to come. She didn't want the daughters to come. So as she was going, she said, you know, you guys stay here because you guys got family. I don't got family here. I'm going to return home, right? So she was saying, you guys stay. And you know what the daughters did? They started crying. They started crying. And I don't know about you, but... um, if your parents were like anything like my parents, when you start crying, it irritates them a little bit more <laughs> when they're trying to scold you or when they're trying to discipline you, right? I mean, they're just gracefully laying the hand of God upon you. And they're, they're, they're scolding you and they're telling you what to do. And then once you start crying, they do, hey, why are you cry? You want me to give you a real reason to cry? And it's like. Why, why are you going to do that to me? You just threw the, and then you just, on my, right? Like, I can see my mom looking at me right now. Love you, mom. Okay. So, so they started crying, right? And I could sense kind of that a little bit of irritation in Naomi, right? So they started crying, and Naomi low-key went Psalm 1, mom, on them. So in your, in your notes, in verse 11, she said, but Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Right? Oh, that's chippy right there, man. She's getting a little irritated, right? 
And low key, she actually high key, she goes on for like three more verses. That's how heated she is. That's how irritated she is. But I couldn't listen. Obviously, it would have took up your whole message notes. So I, I'm going to give you guys what she ended with in verse 13. She says, no, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Now that's telling me she's bitter. She was a little bitter about what's all that happened in Moab. She, she, it seems like she was irritated, but now she's bitter. She's saying the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And see, if we aren't properly positioned, we can let our hearts become bitter. That bitterness, we can start questioning God if we aren't properly positioned. There you go. That's what I was getting at. If we are properly positioned, we can start questioning God. She started questioning their obedience. They wanted to be obe- obedient to her. But because of her bitterness, she started questioning the blessing that God was trying to send, sending through the daughters, right? So maybe there's like a spirit of unbelief. God is not going to bless me. God's not going to do it. Why would I do that? Why would I do that, right? Or maybe there's like past offenses from past hurts and past relationships. When God sends you somebody, your heart is still bitter from that. So you start questioning, no, 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 no. When he sends you Mr. Right or Mrs. Right, and then you start, you start shunning them away because you're still hurt from that. You're still bitter. Your heart isn't properly positioned. Or maybe because you look on social media and on the news and there's all kinds of crazy people out there. So when, so, when God sends you the blesser to bless you, you don't receive it because you're like, I don't trust nobody, just me and mine. That bitterness can cause us to question the blessings from God. And this is a big one I want to talk about, unworthiness. Right? Our hearts can be positioned in unworthiness. God sends somebody to bless you, and you're like, ah, no, nah, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't, I don't deserve it. I don't and do, I, I didn't do anything to deserve your grace, your glory, your love, Lord. I don't deserve anything good. That's the enemy. That's, that's evil thinking. That's the enemy talking right there. And you're letting the enemy build up walls that you're not, your heart's not supposed to have around it. So in order for us to properly receive, we got to make sure that we aren't positioned in bitterness but we need to position ourselves in betterment. We need to stop positioning ourselves in worthiness, whether we are worthy enough. We need to start positioning ourselves in willingness, willing to receive the blessings of God. So in order for us to properly receive, we've got to make sure we're properly positioned. Because if we don't, if we aren't properly positioned, we're going to do the opposite of receiving, which is rejecting. And that's dangerous. Which leads into point number two. This is what happens when we reject. If you reject blessings from others, you repel their blessings from God. You repel their blessings from God. T-H-E-I-R. Did I spell that right? Everybody circle there. Because it's not just you that you're affecting. It's them. The ones that are trying to bless you. You're repelling their blessings. See, God pours out into us. And they're trying to pour out the blessings onto you. Because, but because we don't receive, they're now, it's still inside of them. So their cup is still full. So when God tries to pour, pour out, it's not going to come inside of them because, well, they're still stuffed up. We're stuffing up their flow of blessings in their lives. When we receive the blessings, they can empty out their cups so then God can pour in more, right? Right? So that's why it's dangerous. So let's go back to the story. After Naomi went on Psalm 1, Mom, and pulled off her slipper and stuff, um, she scared off one of the daughters. But the daughter that stayed, her name was Ruth, which is the book who the book is named after, right? And the other daughter left, but Ruth was like, I don't care what you say. I'm going with you. Wherever you go, I go. Wherever you lodge, I'll lodge. Your people? Yeah, that's my people. Your God is going to be my God. You know what we call that nowadays? We call that ride or die. Ruth was a ride or die chick. She didn't care what was going on. She just wanted to ride with Naomi. She wanted to bless Naomi with her obedience to go back, right? And thank goodness that Naomi didn't prevent that. Thank goodness Ruth still was able to go with Naomi to the promised land. 
Because if not, if, Ruth, if Naomi would have prevented Ruth from coming, she would have stopped God's plans. God had plans to use, uh, to bless Ruth uh, herself, bless Naomi, and the generations to come. God had plans to bless Ruth and through Ruth. So if Naomi would have prevented that, she would have stuffed that all up. She would have cut it off, right? See, when Ruth went to the promised land, God unleashed a whole boatload of blessings upon her life. The most notable one, she met a man. Yeah, all the ladies, yep, we're going to talk about it. Who, who, what type of man y'all supposed to find? I mean, he, she found a man, man. I mean... He, she found a husband back in Moab. She found a God-fearing man back in the promised land. All the ladies said, yeah, Ruth, go get you some. Get you some, Ruth. <laughs> she found a man, and his name was Boaz, right? And God used Boaz to unleash a boatload of blessings upon Ruth's life. I want to I wanna go to an excerpt of him talking to his his future wife. Boaz is saying this to Ruth, and this is, this is kind of like a, a representation of how blessed she is to have Boaz, how blessed she's going to be now that she's in the promised land and not back in Moab. So in your notes, chapter 3, verse 10, then he, Boaz, said, blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter. Out, outright he blesses her, outright. For you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning. This lets you know that he pays attention to her, all right? Men, can we just pay attention to our loved ones, our wives, please? If they cut their hair, their hair is shorter, that means they got a haircut. Acknowledge that, please. It's not that hard. If she had black hair the other day, if she has red hair the next day, acknowledge that, please. Come on, somebody. Yeah, all the ladies are, yeah. But anyways, my bad. I didn't mean to offend anybody. Tuck your toes, tuck your toes. Y'all can, you know, let's... I'll get, I'll get back, okay. In, in that, continuing on, in that you did not go after young men, whether poor or rich. This shows that he has wisdom. And now, my daughter, do not fear. Oh, yeah, Boaz is going to provide. He's going to protect her. I will do for you all that you request. Um, he's going to wait hand and foot for her. He's going to honor her as a woman of God because in the, in the last part, he says, for all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. She now has a title. She's virtuous woman, blessed of God. She came from a city that didn't even worship God. She came from nothing. But because she's here in, in Israel, she is blessed of God, virtuous woman. See, if Naomi didn't accept the obedience of Ruth, she would have stuffed it all up. She would have stopped all of that. You want to go further? Naomi, uh, Ruth and Boaz, they blessed generations to come because they continued the lineage that led to King David. And then they continued the lineage that led all the way to the New Testament that led to Jesus Christ. For generations, if you don't receive the blessings, if you reject blessings from others it's a lot deeper than that i know it seems at surface level you guys are looking at me like yo this doesn't seem as important no you understand that without ruth and boaz we wouldn't have jesus christ it's more serious than what we we anticipated let me give you guys uh an example a story right personal story to show you why i use the word repel Repel means to fight back. You fight back their blessings, right? That's why I used repel. Um, so I volunteer at this place, and I love doing volunteer work there. And uh, one of the uh, staff workers came up to me, and she said, this is a token of our appreciation. Here's $100. And see, um, I know, right? Woo! But, um, you know, it, you, there's a thing where we can get too humble. Do you know that? You can get too humble, right? You ever heard of too much of a good thing is a bad thing, yeah. right? Because when somebody tries to come and bless you, when, when God sends you people to bless you, you're like, no, 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 I don't want that. Hey, brother, I wanted a good worst. No, 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 no. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. God's glory, God's glory. Which it is true. God deserves the glory. But you start re rejecting it, right? And I kind of had that in me. So when they said, here's a token of appreciation. No, 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 no. I don't do this for the money. I love working here just, just because I love volunteering, right? 
But she was very persuasive, so I took the check, right? So I had to take the check. <laughs> but because I had that mindset, no, 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 I don't, I don't need it. I didn't do this for the money, right? Because I had that mindset, I lost track of the check. I don't know where it went, boy. So then she emailed me. Another, another worker emailed me uh, months later, and they told me that, yay, it was found. It was found. But not so yay. It was found by somebody else, some random person. And what happened is they lifted the, I think this is what they're trying to explain. They lifted the ink on the check and they wrote another zero. Oh, they wrote another zero. And they cashed that thing. Oh, shame on me. But all because I didn't want to receive that blessing. I repelled their blessing because now it started out at 100. They lost 1,000. It cost more than the blessing itself. They lost more than the blessing. All because I was like, no, 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 no. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm cool. 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 See, when we reject blessings from others, we are objecting to their obedience. When they're coming to bless us, they're practicing obedience to God in their life. They're trying to please God in their walk. But because we reject the blessing, we are objecting to their obedience. We are closing the communion that they have with God. We are repelling their blessings. Can I talk to you all today? When somebody comes to bless you, make sure you receive that. It's, It's a lot deeper than you think. I know you guys are looking at me like this is surface level. I know. It's, it's a lot deeper, though. It's a lot deeper. Receive those blessings. Make sure we are properly positioned in all seasons. Not, not in bitterness, but in betterness. Not in worthiness and trying to get caught up in that. In willingness. Make sure we are properly positioned to receive so that we don't reject and repel other people's blessings. Amen? Amen. All right. Okay. Home stretch. We're going to go a little bit deeper. Just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit, a little bit. We might need a little bit of this. I don't know. It's up to y'all. It's up to you and your walk with God. Okay? So here we go. Point number three. Sometimes blessings from others don't feel good. Sometimes not going to feel good. What, what do you mean by that, LJ? What do you mean? All right. Sometimes blessings from others don't look like blessings. What do they look like? Sometimes blessings from others look like Warnings. Uh oh. Sometimes blessings from others look like truth. Sometimes blessings from others look like correction. Oh. And I don't know about y'all. If you have any experience with that, truth, warning, correction, it don't feel good. It don't. When somebody comes to you and you think that they step into you wrong, but they're just trying to give you a truth, a warning, or a, or a correction from God. Right? But let me preface this real quick. Before we go any further into this point, I got to point this out. We got to get this out the way. You got to make sure this only applies to when it comes from people that have strong spiritual walks that are rooted in the Bible. They are brothers and sisters in Christ, not brothers and sisters that claim Christ. All right? You can't just let anybody speak into your life. Be careful with that. It can't be just no bum off the street or Susie or Mary that just be airing the dirty laundry on, 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 on social media and stuff. And then they come to church and then they go and they talk bad about some people. See, you can't let them. This only applies when, to people that, that live the word. They're not just justified by the word of God. They're justified by the way they live the word of God. Okay. So it only applies when it comes from brothers and sisters in Christ, not claim Christ. All right? Praise God. Okay. So when it comes from these these people, when these blessings come from these people, it don't feel good. Okay? And the reason why we got to address this is because, because these blessings don't make us feel good, we are so quick to cancel them. Oh, am I allowed to use that in the church? Yeah, I thought cancel culture was something outside. When somebody does something, they cancel. No, 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 I'm talking about in the church. There's cancel culture here. When somebody who is strong in the faith comes and gives you truth, warning, or correction, we are so quick to cancel them out. Who the heck does she think she is talking to me and like she know me? She ain't grow up with me. She ain't grow up with me. She don't know me. I'm from Compton. 
Cancel. Who does he think he is on stage telling me to raise my hands in church? I'll raise my hands in church if I want to. I'm a man. I'm going to raise my church. Oh, I'm a man. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Cancel. We're so quick to cancel in church. We're so quick to cancel. And this is all stemmed from this word, this fancy word. I found this out. It's in the dictionary. It's a pretty big word. It makes you sound fancy. So if you want to sound smart, you use this. It stemmed from late Latin. All right? You guys ready for the word? It's called this, accountability. Can we talk about it real quick? Let me say it again. Accountability. And it's not, the, it's not necessarily accountability that we have a problem with here in the church. The problem is we lack the ability to receive accountability. Hey! Can I say that again? We lack the ability to receive accountability. We lack the ability to receive this. Why? Because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't make us feel good, so we cancel them. But it's that blessing, that same blessing that's going to deliver us, that same blessing is going to make us uh, uh, make sure that we are on track and not falling off the track. So we don't got to pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And you can get with this and you can get with that. Right? Accountability is a blessing because it makes sure that we are in line with the purpose and the will of God. I serve with um, a group of leaders, right? But uh, one of my sisters, her name is Cordela Coco. And she's, my, she's one of my accountability partners, right? And uh, I remember there was this one practice. I, think it was, I thought it was a solid practice. We usually get out at like 10, 30, 11-ish. But this time we got out, I got us out at like 9.45. We zoomed through it. I was like, praise Jesus, man. It's a pretty solid practice, right? 9.45 to 11, right? Come on, man. But uh, when I was leaving, she motioned to me right here. <laughs> this is what she did right here. She pulled me aside. Hey, yo, she went ham on me, bro. She was like, you got to make sure that you're not doing this. And you did this right here. And be, you're trying to make it. And these people are going to stray away because you know the, blah, blah. And she went ham on me. Did it feel good? No. Did I like it? No. Did I get a little fleshy? Yeah. But I controlled myself. Why? Because I know that I need that accountability to make sure that I'm not falling off the track. We need the accountability to make sure that we aren't doing exactly what we're not supposed to be doing. That's called missing the mark. We got to make sure that we're not missing the mark. And accountability does that. You can't affirm authority without accountability. That's why I need my team to help me stay grounded. I was watching The Rock eat French toast the other day, right? Don't ask me. I'm a part of the new generation, all right? That's what we do. We just watch people eat, right? I was watching Dwayne Johnson eat French toast and answering questions from his fans. And his, <laughs> I know, it's pretty weird. And his fans were saying, Who, what type of people do you keep around you? And he said something so profound. He said, I don't necessarily keep people that yes me. I keep people that truth me. We need to keep people that truth us, not necessarily to yes us, so that we, we can take what they said, right, even though it doesn't feel good, we can take what they said, take it to our prayer closet, take it to the throne of God and say, God, what do I need to fix? That's growth. So we're not staying stagnant. Amen? Amen. And then to close out the night, in your bullet point, right, so we, we understand that sometimes it may not feel good, that's accountability. But also sometimes... It may not make sense either. Oh, I missed the scripture. I just realized. I'm so sorry. Can I say that scripture real quick? Okay, Proverbs 12.1. I'm trying to be obedient to God. Okay, Proverbs 12.1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. I try to find other, uh, 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 um, other translations. Thank you. But I, all of them basically said stupid except for King James Version that said bullish. But I'm pretty sure you don't want to read King James Version. Okay? So, um, yeah. So, make sure... That uh, when we hate correction, right, um, uh, we, we, it says that we are stupid. But it's dull-hearted, right? The, the Hebrew word for that stupid word is uh, ba'ar, right? 
dull hearted, right? I'm so sorry I missed that. I'm so sorry. But anyways, getting on to the, to, to the last point, right? Sometimes it won't make sense either, okay? Sometimes the blessings from others won't make sense either. Sometimes the bugger don't make sense, brother man. Ooh, y'all didn't think I could speak pigeon, huh? Yeah. Oh, sometimes I don't know when God for move like that. Like that, right? <laughs> sometimes it just, sometimes the blessings from others won't make sense. I'm from Long Beach. I'm sorry. I butchered y'all language. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. We're going to shift gears into uh, Luke chapter 5. And this is where we're going to end it off. Okay. Luke chapter 5. Jesus gets into Peter's boat and tells him to pull out from the bay and do this. In chapter 5, verse 4, Jesus tells him to do this. And when he had stopped speaking, he, Jesus, said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Jesus said that to Peter, or it says Simon, but this is before he changed his name. So there's a, there's a lot of things wrong with this. I went into to research. I'm no fisherman, right? I ain't no fisherman, but I researched this a little bit, and there's a few things that just make no sense here, right? Uh, Peter, number one, has been fishing all night, and he hasn't caught anything in the same ocean that Jesus just told him to go out into. So why would he go out into the same ocean? He didn't catch anything. It makes no sense. Number two, it's in the daytime, and you don't necessarily fish with a net in the daytime. Fish, can, fish have really good eyes. You're not really going to get too much of a catch in the daytime as if you're doing it from midnight to dawn in the dark, right? Number three, Jesus said he will go into the deep to fish with the net. And you don't do that with the net. You do it near the shoreline where the fish gather, right? And then number four, Jesus was a carpenter. So how is he going to tell Peter what to do, right? <laughs> See, um, sometimes when others are sent your way with the blessing, it won't make sense. It won't make sense, right? But see, God has a plan for that. God has a purpose for it, right? See, it may go against everything that makes sense. PK says there's greatness in you, and you're like, that makes no sense because I'm not worthy. There's greatness in my husband. No, that makes no sense. There's no greatness in him, right? It makes no sense. It makes no sense when P PA, Pastor Austin, tells us to have deep conversations, to have deep cleaning. You want me to talk to my kids about sex and relationships so that they don't learn it from the world? I thought, what happened to health class? I thought that was their job. I thought that was their job. It makes no sense. Sometimes it goes against everything that makes sense. But watch this. Jesus came with a blessing that doesn't make sense to Peter. But Peter received it, and this is what happened. In chapter 5, verse 6, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. That's how much fish they caught. Peter was able to witness a miraculous move of God. It didn't make sense. It was a little weird, but he witnessed the move of God. See, when we accept those blessings, God has a ble an overflow of blessings for you. When we accept people, God has an overflow of blessings for you in your life, waiting for you. And it's not even about the blessing itself. See, they caught all this fish. And I want to point this out before we end. I want to point this out right here in, in, in verse 11. So when they had brought, out their, or brought their boats to the land, they forsook all and followed him. They caught all this fish. But when they got to the shore, they left it all. See, receiving blessings from others is not necessarily about the blessings. It's about drawing you closer to Christ. See, receiving the blessings from others, yeah, the blessing is good. Yeah, the encouragement. Yeah, the prayer. Yeah, monetary stuff. That's going to be good. But ultimately, the big, the big reason why we do this is to draw us closer to Christ. They left all the fish and they followed him. So we got to make sure that we are properly positioned to receive. Because if we aren't properly positioned, we're going to reject blessings from others. And when we reject, we repel their blessings on their life. Sometimes it's not going to feel good. Sometimes it's not going to make sense. But when we do receive it, when we do endure, God has an overflow of blessings in our life that will draw Him close, draw us closer to Him. Amen. Amen. Did you guys receive that? Amen. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Can we all rise? Can we all rise? Amen. So when uh.
Pastor Austin always teaches me about leadership. Uh, he always, he puts a tweak on, on one of the most cliche sayings, right? The saying goes, everything rises and falls on leadership, right? But he kind of tweaks it a little bit. I know, I think he kind of says it, he kind of said it a few times in the past in some of his messages. But he says, everything rises and falls on relationship, right? And this is when he's teaching me about leadership. But I think this applies to the receiving as well. Everything rises and falls on relationship. And what do I mean by that? See, when you have relationships with others, you're more susceptible to receive from them. See, your relationships with each other kind of drives your ability to receive from others. Right? Everything falls, rises and falls on relationship. And to go a little deeper, everything rises and falls on relationship. See, your relationship with Christ dictates the ability to receive as well. Because when, we're, when we have a relationship with Christ, when we're close with him, right, and we forsook all and we follow him, what happens is our hearts are now being softened from ashes to beauty. He's starting to chip away at those, at that stony heart, right? And now that our heart is softened, we're able to receive a lot more. Amen? So with all eyes bowed, or with all heads bowed, sorry, and all eyes closed. I'm going to pray for us to just draw closer to him. That's, that's what it is. That's all, it, that's all what it's about. So, Lord, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we understand that receiving plays a huge part in humility. So, Lord, Father God, we want a relationship with you. We want a closer relationship with you so that our hearts can be softened Therefore, we are going to be able to receive from others. Lord, Father God, we love you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, and we honor you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this time of gathering. And we thank you, Lord, Father God, that we have an opportunity to have a relationship with you. Lord, Father God, we pray all of these things in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. We all say amen and amen. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. All the time. Let's join in the song. Let's sing a song before we go home. Amen. Hallelujah. joining us. Tune in next week on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. and next Sunday for you early birds we are going to be streaming at 8 a.m., 10 a.m. and then again at 12 p.m. For more information and to stay connected to our church family download our New Hope LV app or you can visit our website at newhopelasvegas.com. May God bless you and God prosper you. We can't wait to see you again. In the meantime keep hope alive.